Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, Flight Sim Guy here, and uh, I've been getting some good feedback on some of my training videos, so I figured I'd take a moment to talk to you about uh, how you can stabilize and get the maximum frames or get the best performance out of your FSX uh, installation. Now, um, since I'm a manager consultant by profession, I figured I would talk to you about the subject using a slideshow. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first, some background. FSX is old and buggy software. When it first came out, it was met with huge disappointment. Even after two patches, it is still very unstable, very buggy. It would often crash on you. Um, uh, also, FSX is a 10-year-old 32-bit program. We live in a 64-bit world. So, have you ever looked at uh, X-Plane, a digital, digital combat simulator, StarCraft 2? You ever notice how awesome the graphics is on those uh, particular games? You can just install them and play. Not so with FSX. FSX, after you install it, you have to hack the crap out of it to get the best performance. Um, also, uh, the de developers uh, for uh, FSX, when they coded it, they designed it f for it to use most of the CPU's power with regard to the graphics. So a lot of the modern games, they uh, use the power in the GPU to render the graphics uh, on the screen that you see. But for some stupid reason, when the folks at uh, Microsoft designed FSX, they tend to use a lot more CPU power versus GPU power, which is why a high-end graphics card on your rig does no good if you're playing FSX. Um, also, FSX is a 32-bit application. Now, that's important because 32-bit is old-school technology. We're in a 64-bit world. And with 32-bit program, you can only access a maximum of 3 to 4 gigabytes of RAM. What that means is that fancy computer that you bought to play Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's only going to use a tiny amount of the resources you're going to throw at it. And what that means is you have limited CPU resources and limited RAM to work with. So you need to be careful how you set up your software and what you do with regards to getting it configured to get the maximum amount of frames out of it. So as I said before, to get the most out of FSX, you have to, you have to really hack and work at it. So what I'm going to do is share with you my top 15 tips for configuring your machine to run FSX. Alright, bear with me here. Alright, first and foremost, you got to tinker with your sliders. Let me go ahead and show you my sliders. So you can come over here. These are the sliders that I have right here. This is my scenery, uh, my weather. Traffic is very important. The amount of cars and the amount of uh, GA traffic you have at the airport that can really drag on your frames. Same with the weather. If you have a lot of detail and fancy clouds, that can really hit your frames, especially if it's raining. Aircraft, eh, not so much. And over here, this also affects greatly how your uh, how much frames you're going to get. Also, set your target frames to unlimited. Uh, I see a lot of posts where guys say, well, you know, the truth of the fact is that the human eye can't read more than 24 frames per second, which is true. But if you give it a target rate, what's going to happen is the simulator is going to try and match that partic particular rate. And you're giving the CPU more work to do than it does need to. So just go ahead and leave it at unlimited. Put the latest version of the UI Automation Core DLL in your FSS directory. What is the UI Automation Core DLL file? Well, to make a long story short, what it does is it helps a 32-bit program run in a 64-bit world. Here is my FSX file system, and here is the UI Automation Core DLL. This particular version is a more recent version, and it's 149 kilobytes. There are two versions. There's an older version and a more uh, more recent version. You want the more recent version. If you don't use this, what's going to happen is while you're flying along and you're changing screens and you're going back and forth between various views, after a while, your simulator is going to crash. It's just going to say fatal error and, and uh, lock out on you. So you definitely need this file. If you have FSX Steam, I want to say it's already included. If not, just go ahead and Google it. Make sure you get the most recent version. Install it or just drop it in your FSX directory and you should be good to go. Next, set the FSX.exe to run as admin and set to run in backwards compatibility mode XP Service Pack 2. What does this mean? All this means is going back into 
your file system. The FSX, whenever you click on the FSX icon to run FSX, it's just running this program. You want to make sure that this program is set to run as administrator. Just go to properties and in compatibility, set it to run as administrator and run in Windows XP Service Pack 2. How do I know it's Service Pack 2 and not any one of the other ones? Well, that's actually very simple. Right click on any executable and there should be an option for troubleshoot compatibility. I did that with the uh, FSX uh, with the FSX executable and it came back with Windows XP Service Pack 2. And what Microsoft is essentially telling you is if you want this to run properly, run it backwards compatibility in that particular version. All right, moving on. Install all FSX add-ons as administrator. What that means is whenever you're going to run an add-on that you buy, right click, run as administrator, as opposed to just double clicking it. It actually makes a difference. I work in IT infrastructure, running as an admin, when it installs, it, it does something with the permissions of the files and it will ensure that the application runs properly once you actually get to use it. Every add-on that you install related to FSX, be sure to run it as an administrator. Next, disable UAC in Windows. UAC, whenever you click on something, it says, are you sure you want to run this? Whenever you click on this, are you sure you want to run that? That is a security system in Windows that is uh, put in place to make sure that no malicious code or viruses run on your computer. But I have discovered that with various or certain add-ons, UAC can get in the, get in the way with us, how some of the add-ons work within the FSX ecosystem. So you want to disable it. How do you do that? That is very straightforward. All you need to do is hit start, type UAC, change user account control settings, and lower this to never notify and hit OK. Now, obviously, you're taking some risk when you do that. Um, if you have other people use a computer and they're not too careful, you may want to leave your UAC where it is. If it's just you and you're pretty good about not getting malware on your computer, turn this down to zero. OK, next. Disable arrow in Windows. Arrow is a user interface that makes Windows look nice and pretty. However, Arrow takes up a lot of CPU cycles and memory. And remember, FSX has to work with a limited amount of RAM and it chews up a lot of your CPU cycles. So if you look at my Windows desktop, as you can see, it looks really, really bland. It looks old school, just like Windows 3.1. A lot of you guys probably weren't around back then, but it's very bland, and that's because I turned off Arrow. To turn off Arrow, all you need to do is hit Start, type E-E-R-O, change your theme, and then just go ahead and select Windows 7 Basic. In my case, I've selected Windows Classic. That will free up a little bit of RAM and a little bit of CPU cycles that you can use towards FSX. Next. Set you Windows UI for best performance. Now, what this means is this is more uh, configuring the Windows operating system. Let me show you what that is. First, you got to click on Start. Then you got to go to Control Panel. Then you got to go to System. And then you have to go to Advanced System Settings and then you have to go to performance. Here it says visual effects, processor scheduling, memory usage, and virtual memory. Click on settings. And in this first tab here, it gives you some options. You can customize, or you can adjust for best performance, in which case everything is unselected, or you can go ahead and adjust for best appearance, in which case everything is selected. When you do this, it chews up a lot of CPU cycles. So in my case, I set it for best performance. I actually had it custom, and I had only a handful of these things checked. 
believe me, that will make a world of a difference if you're trying to get better frames in FSX. All right, so how many of you on your uh, gaming rig, how many of you are actually using Wi-Fi to connect to the internet? If you are, don't. Get rid of the Wi-Fi. Stick with good old-fashioned Ethernet cable. Why is this? Your wireless radio chews up a ton of CPU cycles. It will make a big difference if you kill the Wi-Fi and go with a regular Ethernet cable. Okay, what's next? Are you using a wireless mouse? The same principle applies. That little USB adapter that you plug into your uh, USB port, it doesn't take up a lot of CPU cycles, but it does use CPU cycles. Go ahead and use an old-fashioned corded mouse. All right, this next one, disable unnecessary Windows services. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, whenever you fire up your computer, uh, Windows has dozens of services that do various things such as configures for wireless printing, uh, configures uh, all sorts of services and in many cases a lot of those services you will never use. How do you get to see those services? Again go to your start menu and in this case just type services. By the way I'm making this up as I go along. Uh, so this first one here that says services with a little gear click on that and you're gonna get this window now this lists here a whole bunch of Windows services okay as you can see it has a status st start startup type and a log on as if you click on status it will sort by status all the ones that are says started those start up automatically when you boot your computer and these other ones startup type manual they'll only run if you manually run them and then you have a handful here that are disabled the point I'm trying to make is and I haven't done this yet because I haven't taken the time to do it there is a crap ton of services in this list that you will never use on your computer so to disable one all you need to do is right click properties and you can go ahead and set it manual, startup, or whatever. And each service that you disable, you're freeing up that much more CPU and you're freeing up that much more RAM. Which services do you need or which services you don't need? All you need to do is go to Google and type unnecessary Windows. I guess you can put in your operating system here, but just unnecessary Windows services. And go to Windows 10. And you'll find plenty of articles that will itemize what services you don't need. Just go in there, turn them off. Anything you can do to free up CPU and RAM will improve your FSX performance. Next, disable antivirus software. I have free antivirus software on my computer, AVG, and every five minutes that little stupid thing pops up a little window, upgrade to this, or upgrade to that, or do this, do that, it is so annoying. So what I do, it's very, very simple, you go over to your startup tray, right click, and temporary disable AVG protection until restart. Okay, now this window right here, this is UAC. Obviously, I haven't turned it off on this computer because I don't use it that much. But I'm going to go ahead and disable it. Okay, what's next? Be selective in what sceneries you make active while simming. All right, so you can install just about whatever you want in your flight simulator ecosystem. You know, you have your GSX, you, get, you have your uh, Easy Dock. You have your various add-on sceneries. You have all the planes in your virtual hangar. Um, you have uh, Active Sky Next. You have FS Passengers. Remember, FSX has to work in a limited amount of RAM. So the more stuff you add to your FSX environment, the more you're going to make FSX unstable. That does not apply with aircraft because obviously you're only flying one aircraft at a time. But if you have all sorts of scenery, I think with FSX, whenever you fly over something or whatever, it loads up the scenery into memory, presents it, 
And if you fly by it, I don't think in FSX the scenery, the memory it takes up is freed up. I think with P3D they've uh, improved the code so that a scenery is loaded and you uh, it's not needed anymore, it's removed from memory. In FSX, a lot of what happens in memory goes there and it stays there. And if you're simming for a long time, a lot of guys do long haul flights, when you're on final you get that fatal error and you like lose your mind. So what I'm saying is be selective with what you're going to run when you're going to fly a mission. Next, detail and advanced weather are especially hard on frames. I spoke about that earlier. Defrag your hard drive. Um, if you have an SSD drive, don't defrag. Defragging your SSD drive can actually reduce its lifespan but for the most part the more you have to go to the disk to get things the slower your computer is going to run so if you have your files defragmented it's going to make things a little bit better and last but not least and this is probably the most important thing you can do run msconfig and clean out your startup tray this is going to save cpu and ram what does that mean well it's very very simple a lot of times when you install programs depending what the program is I'd say about eight times out of ten, if it's some sort of computer utility, it puts itself in the Windows startup tray. And what that means is when you turn your computer on, this program starts up automatically, even though you didn't say you didn't want it to do that. Okay, go to the window, type msconfig, click on this, and then go to the startup tab. This is all the junk that would have started up on this computer had I had not cleaned out a lot of it. And like I said, applications, you install them, they just put themselves in the startup. So from time to time, you have to come in here and clean it out. Now in this case, there's certain things you need to want running. A lot of these drivers that comes with the computer, you want those, those running. NVIDIA, you want those to run, that's your graphics. Uh, Seed Cleaner, I choose to have that up and running. Um, AVG, this is my antivirus, but as you can see, AVG has several uh, startup, AVG framework, and a couple other ones. Decide, determine what you want, what you think is important, leave those checked, uncheck everything, or uncheck the rest of them. You can, if you want, uncheck everything. Your computer will still boot up fine, just as some things that you normally use, you're going to have to manually start them up. Each of these programs that run by themselves takes up memory, takes up CPU cycles. By unchecking these, you're freeing up more resources for FSX to use for frames. And I want to say that's all. I uh, hope you found this video useful. Flight some guy here. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.